The industrial market continues to be on fire. We are four percentage points above the national average as far as industrial rents growths are concerned. And prior to the pandemic, we were at six or 7% a year. And just last year, we are up 14% as far as rents are concerned. Hi, I'm Amy Calandrina. I'm bringing to you our latest Beyond Your Space Needs to give you insights into the industrial market here in Orlando. So I'm sharing with you a most recent report from CoStar, which is one of the tools in which I use. And first of all, I want to bring to you some key market stats. And so there were over $4 million, 4 million um, square feet in deliveries. And then we had about the same amount get absorbed into the market. And so we continue to have um, need from users. And so developers are trying to keep space, uh, pace with the incredible demand. So if you have a surge in population, which we continue to have, albeit a little bit slower, uh, residential is going to lead and then commercial is going to follow. And so as far as that is concerned, you are going to have the rooftops lead and then you're going to have the retail and then the office and then, of course, the industrial to support all of that. We continue to have a strong demand for consumer goods and all of these different things are fueling the continued heating up of the industrial market. Um, most of the demand seems to be for logistics, and I will share with you in this report, um, people are wanting more than 30 foot high ceilings, they want this newer product, and so we're seeing a lot of development here in Orlando along the 429 Beltway, especially with the last leg of that Beltway being completed in the Wakaiva Parkway, and we'll show you some pictures of that and so we had uh, more than three, uh, 380 properties trade in the investment uh, market over the last year, and it accounted for over $1.7 billion in total volumes. And so you can look here as far as logistics versus uh, specialized industrial versus flex, and we can look as far as what the vacancies are expected to go to. And so here, our historical average is a 7.6 as far as vacancy. And we are forecasted to be around 5%. And so there is a supply and demand relationship wherein if there's very little product available and there's this strong demand that's going to continue to drive up Prices. And so here again, we've had a demand for industrial space continuing to escalate. And over, as discussed, uh, the vacancy rate has compressed significantly over the last two years, and that is causing continued uh, pressure on pricing and continued rise. And then most, again, the tenant demand has been occurring in northwestern Orange County along the 429 corridor in the newer distribution parks. Here we have that we are projecting the, here is the United States vacancy, which is expected to rise. And then in our particular market is this red column and it is expected to go lower. And so that is going to continue to keep the pricing higher, in my opinion. Here, as far as leasing is concerned, here are some of the bigger deals that have been taken down in our market and some of the larger deals. And so we um, prior, you know, in Orlando, as it's continued to grow, we have larger deals. And so we have two half million dollar deals that occurred. And the rents, as I had discussed, is Orlando's rent growth is 14%, well ahead of pace of the overall national market. Now, um, we have rent growth that is well above that. And so here we have market rent growth. You can see that acceleration. Now, we do expect the rent growth to come into more of a normal pattern of normalcy by 2024, 2025. 
market rents, the rents are continued to rise. I don't think quite at the same level. You see that it, there is some evening off. And so while we continue to have this strong appetite for modern distribution and warehouse space, um, one would think with the increased interest rates and tightening of the credit markets that it would slow that. However, we have not really seen that. Now, we have had a decline in total leasing volume, about 5% here. And here is the overall deliveries. We're expecting to still be higher than average moving forward if you look back at previous years. We have 61 properties that are under construction with over 10 million square feet. And about 20% of that is pre-leased already. And as I discussed, there's 380 industrial sales that have uh, taken up $1.7 billion in transaction value. As far as sales are expected to uh, sales prices, I think there will be a leveling off. People are asking me if I expect them to go over a cliff. I do not think so. We don't have the data to substantiate that type of claim, wherein if there continues to be a strong demand for industrial space, if that is going to continue to drive the prices up. Now, we'll, there's also some pressures as far as a possible recession and what type of recession that's going to be that could come into play. Um, but again, I've told people I expect more of a leveling off for what I am seeing here in front of uh, my eyes. Now, um, here is some cap rates we've seen as low as in the threes, and the highest that we've seen is a nine. Um, we have the highest per square feet, uh, the highest price per square foot over a thousand. Now that has to be something in particular. I'd have to look into that particular transaction and perhaps it was purchased for land value and there's a very small building on it and someone can go in and build a much bigger building. I don't think that that seems to be right. If you look at the average and the median prices, those are very close. Um, and so that seems to tell a story um, whenever I'm preparing a broker opinion of value, I kind of discard what's at the very top and discard what's at the bottom. And I look at what, what is there in the middle? And what's that story telling you? And so you can see that the average and the median are very, very close. And so to me, seeing that the ceiling heights are very similar, the building square feet, all of that's kind of similar. You, you can see a pattern here in the Orlando marketplace. And so um, as far as our economies, it's one of the most dynamic here in the Southeast. And again, we have the population surge and there's a lot of economic benefits. Uh, we have a big push in here in Orlando to have continued more tech and fintech. And the I think the biggest challenge we have in here in, is in many cities is there's affordability gap. So, but we have a very dynamic economy. I can go into some of these particular items in greater detail if, if you'd like. Or again, if you'd like a copy of this report, I'm more than happy to share this with you. Um, here is where we have growth as far as employment. And here in the U.S., um, there has been uh, no real growth in, in manufacturing. However, here in our particular market, that has grown by uh, roughly eight and a half percent. And uh, we are forecasted to continue to grow in the manufacturing sector. And here is what makes up our Orlando market. And these are the different sub markets. Uh, my particular office is right around the intersection of two and three here on the line. Um, I transact I considerably in uh, three, six, two, five, and seven actually doesn't have as much as industrial as you would you would like. It's it's pretty challenging uh, to find product there. There um, there seems to be a lot more in in northwestern. Uh, Orange County. And so here we have, as far as the sub market, here's the inventory. And so, yeah, you look at Southwest, there's about 35,000 versus Southeast. Uh, you have, uh, this is in hundreds, uh, this is in thousands. And then Southeast is about twice the size of the 
South, uh, southeastern Orange County is about twice the size of the Southwest market. Here's what some of the asking rates have been as far as market rents is concerned with Northeast Orange County uh, topping it. I would say that's because of the newer product and people are willing to um, pay uh, to not have to deal with functional obsolescence, which you can see in some of these 1970s and 1980s buildings that aren't made out of the superior tilt wall construction, have inadequate truck courts, you know, all those types of things. You can see the disparity in the pricing per square foot. And here is a bit more detail to round out the report. But again, I'm Amy Calandrino, and I'm founder of Beyond Commercial. Here's with your most recent industrial update for Orlando.